to our worship at Westminster United Methodist Church. We're so happy that you've joined with us today in worshiping our Lord. We're so happy that you are reaching us by uh, internet and, you know, long distance this way. We uh, want to thank you all for your financial contributions to the church. Please do continue to uh, help us out with those financial contributions. We don't want to run into any problems financially. We have had to dip into savings uh, in order to meet our financial obligations last month. And we'll see what happens this month where we don't have those financial reports just yet. But I uh, appreciate so very, very much that you all are remembering your church so that when we are able to open again and have in-person worship, we would have a church building to return to. So thank you so very, very much for remembering your church during this time. I appreciate very much my friend Bob Dean uh, preaching last week while I was out uh, after the birth of my first grandchild, Emran. Emran um, came into this world weighing nine pounds, three ounces. Uh, it was an exciting time for our entire family. Uh, there were some complications after uh, Jenny gave birth, um, but she is fine now. She recuperated. She's fine. And I know that they're probably not watching this, but I really want to give a shout out to the medical people for all of their help in uh, saving my daughter's life and helping the baby to be fine and, and healthy. And both mother and child are now at home and doing fine, recuperating well, and on their way to having a wonderful life together. So um, I know that Joe, my son-in-law, was uh, very excited to be a part of the birthing process as they now allow dads to be. So that was exciting. Uh, the rest of us got to stay home and wait for text messages from Joe as to what was going on. But we got to see lots of pictures and things until we finally were able to meet um, our granddaughter for the first time when, you know, after they returned home, we were able to go over and meet her. So I do want to thank all of you for your prayers. 
Um, they sustained us through this, and uh, God is good. We want to, um, again, thank the medical team, and um, we give thanks to God for overseeing everything. Our prayers were lifted up, and our wonderful, awesome God heard those prayers, and uh, we have a very, very joyful event in our lives. So thank you to Bob Dean for preaching for me so that I could take time off to be with my family during this time. And now I'm back in the saddle and excited to be here worshiping with you this morning. We're going to start off with our first hymn, As the Deer. If you have your The Faith We Sing book with you, it's on page 2025. If not, the words will appear on the screen. So let us continue our worship. that I didn't have all of the words on the screen. I uh, thought that I would have caught that, but I did not. So I apologize. And let us continue with worship in uh, our call to celebration. Will you join with me? Come to rejoice together. God is present with us. We are restored to life morning after morning. 
Sing praises to God, all you faithful ones. We will give thanks to God's holy name. And will you join with me in our community prayer? Faithful God, we recognize your abiding yes to us when we are in deep need. We come to you now aware of some of the continuing issues in our lives that paralyze us and separate us from you. <clears throat> we have lived for so long at less than our best that we seldom recognize our need for your healing touch. We are attracted by your promises and drawn by your love. Bring healing and peace to us that we might become instruments of healing in our world. Amen. Our special music for today is Beneath the Cross of Jesus. As we go to a time of prayer this morning, I would ask that you continue to pray for those that you know are in need of your prayers. This is a time when we can center our hearts and quiet our, our souls and lift up all of our needs to our Lord. It's a time when we can also celebrate with all of the things we have to celebrate in our lives, to give thanks. And so I would invite you to take a moment and lift up these concerns and these celebrations silently as we pray. Let us pray. Good morning, Lord. We have no words to express the gratitude we feel for all you have done. 
You have given yourself to us in Jesus. You have given us our lives. You have loved us long before we were aware of you. You've been gracious to us in our failings and have never held our sins against us. You have poured out the blessings of life upon us. You have given us food to eat, clothes to wear, friends and family who love us, homes in which to live, cars to drive, and so many other things we are so often finding ourselves taking for granted, or we are tempted to think that we have gotten for ourselves through our own diligence. Oh, but you've given us so much more. You have given us the privilege to live in a free and peaceful land where we can worship according to the dictates of our own conscience. You have given us opportunities to serve you in this world and to care for your people. You have given us health. You have given us a sound mind. <clears throat> you have filled us with joy. You have also filled our lives with purpose and meaning by making us agents of redemption and ministers of your gospel. You have given us an open heaven and the ability to speak to you in prayer any time. You've given us your spirit, your wisdom, your guidance. Oh God, our hearts overflow with all the good things that you've given us, all the ways you have shown your love and that you've shown us that we are deeply loved. We ask you to make us truly thankful, to always take time to say what, is, what it has meant to us, that, that you have shown your goodness to us. You've made us beloved children and treated us like no earthly parent ever could. And so, we thank you. We are eternally grateful to you. And we join together this morning to praise you and to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you know, you have been faithfully sending in your contributions either by the online link on our website or by mailing in money or checks, um, by dropping those into the office through the mail slot in the wall of the office uh, wall. And so we do give you thanks that you have done that. And we, every week, want to take time to dedicate the gifts that have come in the previous week so that we can dedicate them to the use um, for ministry uh, and for love and caring in this world. So let us take a moment now to pray together the prayer to dedicate our offering. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the privilege of giving. We have received so much. Now it is a joy to share. All that we have belongs to you. We want to do good with everything we have received. Bless today's offering and tomorrow's spending with insight, compassion, and responsible stewardship. May our giving for others reflect your generosity toward us. Amen. 
Our hymn is I Am Thine, O Lord, uh, found in our hymnal on page 419. If you don't have your hymnal, the words will appear on the screen. Our scripture for today is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. 
people were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, as we marked the beginning of Lent with Ash Wednesday on the 17th, um, we recall that a part of uh, Ash Wednesday calls us to be reminded of Christ's call to deny ourselves. And we're, we're supposed to take up our cross and follow Christ. This difficult call to discipleship comes just after Jesus predicts his own rejection and suffering. And it comes as Jesus and his disciples are making their way to Jerusalem and then to Jesus' inevitable death. Lent is a season of preparation leading up to Easter. It's a time when followers of Christ acknowledge their own frailty and grow in their relationship with God. It's a time when we make intentional decisions to set aside those distractions of this life so that we can focus on our life with Christ. <clears throat> So today, in the coming weeks of Lent, we will travel with Jesus to Jerusalem. We will pause with Jesus as he preaches and as he teaches and as he heals and as he performs miracles. We will make efforts to focus our energies on the journey that Christ calls us to walk with him to deny ourselves, to take up our crosses, and yet always remembering the promise of Easter is that this journey is a journey of hope and then to the joy of resurrection. So today we set off and our first stop is in the region of Judea. And we pause here for this moment to listen to Jesus teach as he lifts up some children and he lifts them into his arms. And of course, we can hardly talk about a trip in children without that inevitable question popping into our minds. Hey, are we there yet? <laughs> and you know, as annoying as that question can be on road trips, it's a good question to ask here. Because unlike the disciples who traveled with Jesus, we have the benefit of perspective. <clears throat> we know how long the journey to Jerusalem ultimately ends. And we've heard the accounts of the empty grave. And we know that Jesus rose to new life. But sometimes I think, that knowledge is as much of a detriment as it is a benefit. We get focused on the resurrection and we forget about the hard road that leads there. And we're talking about eternal life with God. And we lose sight of the way that we are called to live right now. It's so easy to feel like we've arrived, but 
Uh, we sometimes think that, oh, we're there. But as a wise person once said, you're never there. You're always here. And here is where we all walk with Jesus, where we deny ourselves day in and day out. We take up our crosses and we follow Christ. So today we're going to take some time. We're going to think about what keeps us from journeying with Christ, from growing in our relationship with God. We're all God's children. And as adults and children alike, we are seeking to journey with Christ. We have to consider who and what gets in the way of our relationship with Christ. <clears throat> When the little children began making their way toward Jesus that day, who was it that tried to keep them away? It, it was the disciples. And we have to remember that Jesus was on his way to the cross, and he knew it. That cruel shadow could never have been too far away in his mind. And yet still, Jesus has time for the children. Even with such a tension as this in his mind, um, he was looking down the road to his inevitable death. And so he takes the time, even though his mind is preoccupied with that, he takes the time to take the children in his arms. And he had the heart to smile in their faces and maybe to play with them for a little while. But the disciples wanted to keep the children away. It's not that they were trying to be party poopers or people who didn't like children or anything like that. The disciples wanted to actually protect Jesus. They didn't know exactly what was going on, but they knew quite clearly that tragedy lay ahead and that they could only see the burden that Jesus was carrying. They didn't want Jesus to be bothered, so they couldn't imagine that Jesus actually wanted all of these children all around him at a time such as this. But even still, Jesus said, let the children come to me. And Jesus' lesson about children and the kingdom of God is a good way to answer a question for ourselves. Who or what is hindering us from our journey with Christ? Jesus is always ready to welcome us into his presence. But sometimes people get in our way just like the disciples who tried to stop the children running into Jesus' arms. If we have trouble journeying with Christ, consider not only the people in our lives, but also the way that we live our own lives that might be getting in the way of our relationship with God. Think about the traits of the children that would make Jesus lift them up as in an ideal example of kingdom people. There is the child's humility, and with few exceptions, most children are embarrassed when they become the center of attention. Children don't know how to think in terms of pride and prestige. They haven't yet learned to discover the importance of themselves. Children are also obedient. Ah! Yeah, right. Hmm? Huh? But certainly a child is often disobedient. But a child's natural instinct is to obey, particularly young children. So a child is is also trusting. Instinctively, children recognize their own ignorance and their own helplessness, and they 
trust the one who knows better than they do. And a child's trust is seen in a child's confidence in other people. It's a unique trait that ch of children that they don't expect any person really to be a bad person. And a child will often make friends with a perfect stranger. You know, from time to time I enjoy watching the TV show The Big Bang Theory. And there's one episode in this series where the main character, Sheldon, who is a brilliant theoretical physicist, he's, he has absolutely no social skills. And he's trying to learn how to make friends. And his efforts land him in a bookstore where he's gone, to, he's gone there to find a book about how to make friends. So the salesperson in the bookstore directs Sheldon over to the children's section where Sheldon picks out an appropriate book. It's entitled, Stu, the Cockatoo is New at the Zoo. And, and so he sits down in one of the child-sized chairs and he proceeds to pick up a conversation with a young girl there. She's sitting across the table from him. So this girl begins talking openly with Sheldon, clearly thinking nothing about the fact that this adult is sitting there in the child section reading a child's book or about the fact that Sheldon wants to be the girl's friend. So the child has not yet learned to suspect the world. She still believes the best in others. Well, children also have short memories. They haven't yet learned to bear grudges and to nourish bitterness. Um, even when a child has been treated unjustly, and who among us was never treated unjustly as a child? Well, the child soon forgets and forgets so completely that she doesn't even need to forgive. And these are the traits of kingdom people, people who journey with Christ and grow as Christ's disciples. When we find that our relationship with Christ seems to be waning, when we find that it's a difficult journey with Christ, it's probably because we've lost those traits. So instead of being humble, it, we tend to be egotistical. Instead of being obedient, we're stubborn. We're disobedient. Rather than having faith in God and trusting the authority of Christ in our lives, we lack faith and we try to be self-sufficient. And then we hold grudges. When Christ calls us down the path of forgiveness, we hold on to the hatred and we cast judgments on others. And friends, we cannot experience the kingdom if we don't live the ideals of the kingdom. We cannot walk with Christ if we're not willing to follow in Christ's ways. Christ told the disciples that they must deny themselves and take up their cross. And he knew this way wasn't an easy way, but he also knew that it was the only way into the fullness of God's kingdom. And that's the way we must go. To journey with Christ is to follow a different path, a path that requires us to put aside those character flaws that keep us from Christ, and a path that sometimes may take us in a different direction from people in our lives who hinder our relationship with Christ. It's difficult to, to hear, but sometimes married couples get in the way of one another's relationship with Christ, especially if one of them is not a believer. 
And parents can get in the way if they are skeptical of the church and they can encourage us to use our time a little bit differently. Ultimately, they get in the way of the most important relationship at all, of all, and that is our relationship with Christ. Perhaps colleagues would rather see us work all the time rather than taking time for devotion and worship. And, you know, the list could go on and on and on of people that get in our way of our relationship with God. You know, teens are not the only ones who deal with peer pressure. The influence of many of the people around us can block our way to the road of hope. Within us and all around us, there are forces that pull us one way or the other from full commitment to Christ. I heard something interesting this week about fruit trees. Sometimes fruit trees put so much energy into growing and growing up that little or no energy is invested in bearing fruit. So do you know what the solution to this problem is? The farmers will take an ax and they make a deep cut in the trunk of the tree near the ground. While severe, this wound often produces change in the tree. And then the next year, the tree bears more fruit than ever before. Now, I don't think that any of us would deny the fact that when it comes to our relationship with Christ, we could all bear more fruit. None of us are there yet. There are places where we all could make a few you know, cuts in our own lives so that we might grow in our life with Christ. Indeed, it is an act of denial and it requires a change of life and it's sometimes even a painful change. And it's the call of Christ to all people. He says, deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow me. And still, the call to follow Christ is a call to the abundant life. And the Lenten journey is, 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 is uh, ultimately a journey to hope. Even with all the trials and all the difficulties that we go through as we journey with Jesus, we have before us not only the hope, but the promise of res resurrection life. So this Lenten season, our greatest task is to examine our lives. And we need to determine where there are roadblocks that hinder our journey with Christ. We have to humbly acknowledge our weaknesses and our shortcomings. And then we have to change our ways. Like children, we must be less egotistical, more humble. We have to recognize our need for God, and we have to put our lives, all of them, all of it, into God's hands. Difficult as that may be, we have to become more trusting. We have to become more obedient. We have to become more fruitful, bit by bit, piece by piece. And we can always trust that just as with those little children long ago, Christ is waiting to welcome us into his arms. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us join together in our hymn, Wonderful Words of Life, found in your hymnal on page 600, or the words will be on the screen. Sing the 
them over again to me, wonderful words of God. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of God. Words of life and beauty, teaching faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, the lesson one gives to all, wonderful words of life. Sinners to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctifies forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And now will you join with me in the benediction? With every breath, we give thanks to God's holy name. We will share the good news of God's faithfulness. God's healing presence is ever available to us. God's quiet faithfulness transforms our spirits. Amen.